a sign up list for people who would like to attend but that's November 2nd we'll meet at the church at 620 in carpool, carpool over November 13th keep it on your calendar spruce, spruce up day for the inside and outside of the church something to look forward to we'll probably have some snacks on hand for those who participate in that and I do have the books for confirmation um, to get to Bailey and Sophia uh, if they're listening in this morning on the virtual. Please see me about getting your books for confirmation. Okay, that's a whole lot of announcements. Did I miss anything? I just want to mention again, our German Christmas market is coming up. And so, um, again, we're planning, still the planning stages of everything. Um, you'll keep on hearing from me in the future about it. <laughs> Within the next month. <laughs> Any other announcements? Let us take time to center our thoughts, our spirits, our minds as we prepare for worship with the ringing of the bell and the time for centering. time for our call to worship. If you would like to stand, please do so. Come, beloved of God, and pause in the place of liminal longing. We come betwixt and between, pulled in many directions. Trust that the Holy One is already forming a new creation in you. We come trusting God's mercy to center and change us. Indeed, the Holy One calls you by name for deeds of mercy. May God's ancient action be a present presence as we gather. This morning, song of praise and supporting human justice is on page 612. And it's titled, Oh Jesus, I Have Promised. Kate, could you play it once through for us, please?
join together for the prayer of the day. Holy love, take our weary waiting and form in us a readiness for renewal. Shape our hearts for healing, our minds for mending, our souls for sharing. Let no weight of the moment prevent our remembering of your long reach of faithfulness cast over the whole creation. Still us enough to discover again your prayer rising in our frame, that we may be formed by your love made known to us in Jesus Christ. By this, change us on the inside, that our outer lives may more clearly reflect your will and way of mercy into the world. And now we will pass the peace to one another. Today's first scripture reading is from Psalm 66, verses 1 through 
through 12. Shout for joy to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies cringe before you. All the earth bows down to you. They sing praise to you. They sing the praises of your name. Come and see what God has done, his awesome deeds for mankind. He turned the sea into dry land. They passed through the waters on foot. Come, let us rejoice in him. He rules forever by his power. His eyes watch the nations. Let not the rebellious rise up against him. Praise our God, all peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard. He has preserved our lives and kept our feet from slipping. For you, God, tested us. You refined us like silver. You brought us into prison and laid burdens on our backs. You let people ride over our heads. We went through fire and water, but you brought us to a place of abundance. So ends today's reading. Please join together with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please join with me in the prayer of transformation and restoration. Loving God, form in me a space for healing and enter in anew. For too long I have clutched the past ways that have prevented the possibility of moving forward. Boundaries of my own making have kept me resistant to your healing mercy. Definitions of the world's making have created divisions preventing the possibility of a new day, a new season, a new life. By your mercy, form me for a life of mercy and thanks. Lift every burden and release me from ever long rehearsed story, holding me hostage to any narrative of hopelessness, hurt, and fear. Grant instead a lightness of spirit forgiving me and freeing me to leap into a dance of delight beyond my wildest imagination. The words of grace. Hear the good news into our little openings of trust. God is pouring a large love born of mercy. No burden of your past is stronger than this power of love to forgive, heal, and bless. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Now may our lives become songs of thanksgiving and praise that others may too discover this amazing power of God to make all things new. Amen. So for the message for all God's children today, I'm going to make you work, those of you who are here in the sanctuary. Let's lift up ways we can praise God. What are some ways in which we can praise God? Anybody have one? How do we praise God? Yes. We can step out of our day-to-day -day life into a place we consider sacred and take a moment to appreciate God in his creation. I 
I think I've got it all down for our virtual watchers. It's been lifted up. We step out of our day-to-day -day life to a place that's sacred and appreciate God's creation. Any other ideas? How do we praise God? I have one. Yes. Um, just naturally, sometimes when you're in a conversation, just a discussion about anything, it could be just a beautiful day, it could be, you know, like the birth of a child, it could be anything, and you just end up saying at the end of the conversation, praise God, just because of everything of something that's so good and grand happening. So just in a conversation. So just in a regular conversation yeah. about anything, ending up saying, praise yeah. God. Something, something just makes your heart burst, and you just say, praise God. Something that makes your heart burst, and you say, praise God. That's a good one. I mean, they're both good ideas. Anybody else? Yes. By using the uh, gifts and abilities that God has given us to aid in the betterment of his world and to keep him in mind as we do so. So using our gifts and ability for the betterment of his world, God's his world, world yeah. God's world. Anybody else? Any other takers? Yes. So no matter how bad things get, we know that there are others who have it worse off than we do, and we lift up praise to lift them up. Is that the gist of it? Anybody else before we close this time together, the word for all God's children? Yes. So all of God's blessings bestowed upon us, our friends, our family, creation, the changing of seasons, we praise God. What about music? Praise Does, God. Praise God. That lifts your heart, doesn't it? Yeah. The music we sing in church, the prayers, hopefully, that we lift up in church bring a lightheartedness to cause us to praise God. So let's have a prayer about all this. <clears throat> Dear God, we do lift up praise each time we worship together. We lift it up unto you, our creator, our strength, our rock and redeemer. Let us remember in our daily lives to take time out of those lives to give you the thanks and give you the praise. Amen. Amen. Well, I think it's only appropriate that our next hymn will be a song of praise. Um, it's see your insert. It's awesome God. And we will sing, we'll, we will repeat the verse twice and then go into the ending. Okay, can you refresh our memory, please?
Amen. Amen. So for joys and concerns this week, we are particularly thinking about those who were affected by recent hurricanes. We are thinking again of the people of Ukraine, the people of Great Britain, Ruth, Art, June, the Mueller's, Pastor Carol, Gloria Pop, Harold, Perry, the birth of all of Jane, Lucia, all those who are affected by Alzheimer's, hailing the excitement of the upcoming German Christmas market in December, Dino, Kelly and family, and all that you will lift up now in remembrance. Are there prayer concerns today? I have a joy. Yay. It was just um, at the park last night. They had had um, their movie in the park. It was Hocus Pocus. It was a <laughs> lot of fun. It's a great movie. And um, they had a pretty good crowd. But I noticed that children cannot sit there to watch a movie. <laughs> they have to be out Money. running around, yelling and screaming. They probably slept like little angels last night, though, burning up all the energy that they had. It was a great time at the park. That's awesome. Other prayer concerns? Kelly. the Perez family and the loss of Tony. Other prayer concerns, yes. Uh, just a happy birthday to my sister who traveled to Washington. Connie, Connie happy birthday. Yay. We won't say how old she is, but it's <laughs> Connie's birthday. Happy birthday, Connie, who's watching right now. Any other prayer concerns? Perry. Perry, remind me of his first name. Bill. Bill. Perry's brother, Bill, who needs our prayers right now. Any others? Let us go to God in prayer. O oh God, we hear these words from Scripture. Take a good look at God's wonders, and they'll take your breath away. God converted sea to dry land. Travelers crossed the river on foot. Now isn't that cause for a song? Life-giving God, we lift up our voices to sing praises, to acknowledge your wonderful creation. We lift up our voices to call out for justice, to protect this amazing world that you have made, that it will pass from generation to generation in all the beauty with which you have endowed it. This day we lift up joy for a movie in the park and the exuberance of young people. We wish Connie a happy birthday and pray that she has an amazing day. We ask for prayers for the family and friends of Tony, the Perez family. We ask for prayers for Perry's brother, Bill and to all others that we lift up to you in silence this day, prayers, things that are on our mind, but we have not spoken out loud. We pray that you be with those concerns. We also turn our attention to ways in which we can live out your glory, inspire in us a desire to do good and to spread joy, 
Be ever with us in the ways we reach out to others through our living. We pray all this in our Savior's name. Amen. The second reading this morning comes from the book of 2 Timothy, the second chapter. This is the translation from the New International Version, and it goes like this. Remember Jesus Christ raised from the dead, descended from David. This is my gospel for which I am suffering even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But God's word is not chained. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Here is a trustworthy saying. If we died with him, we also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we disown him, he will disown us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot disown himself. Dealing with false teachers. Keep reminding God's people of these things. Warn them before God against quarreling about words. It is of no value and only ruins those who listen. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, and who correctly handles the word of truth. Amen. Amen. So, the word for holy humor this morning passed the Michael test. So hopefully it's a good one for you. A priest and a pastor stood near a sharp curve on a busy road holding signs. The end is near, read the priest sign, while the pastor's sign warned, turn around before it's too late. As he passed by, a jerk in a sports car yelled, idiots and shook his head, then he blasted his horn, raised one finger, and stomped on the gas. Moments later, the clerics heard the sound of screeching tires, followed by a big splash. The priest turned to the pastor and said, maybe we should change our signs to bridge out. Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let's go to God in prayer. Dear God, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our holy rock and redeemer. Amen. Endurance. We hear from the second scripture lesson from 2 Timothy about endurance. After battling a massive five-day bout with a migraine, I can attest to the mentality of endurance. Paul tells Timothy that he is enduring much in the name of Christianity and asks us to endure much as well as followers in the faith. Remind them of this and warn them before God that they are to avoid wrangling over words which does no good, but ruins those who are listening. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved by him, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly explaining the word of truth. In our first scripture reading from Psalms, we hear much about giving God the praise for all good things. 
Praise our God, all peoples, let the sound of his praise be heard. Both passages speak to spreading the word of God and letting praise be lifted up in light of it. Let your actions show that you are spreading the word of Christ in all that you do. In light of this message, I share with you a story that Pam Dobeck put up on her Facebook page recently that I felt was worth sharing. The story goes like this. Get your tissues ready. It's a moving one. I arrived at the address and honked the horn. After waiting a few minutes, I honked again. Since this was going to be my last ride of my shift, I thought about just driving away. But instead, I put the car in park and walked up to the door and knocked. Just a minute, answered a frail, elderly voice. I could hear something being dragged across the floor. After a long pause, the door opened. A small woman in her 90s stood before me. She was wearing a print dress and a pillbox hat with a veil pinned on it, like somebody out of a 1940s movie. By her side was a small nylon suitcase. The apartment looked as if no one had lived in it for years. All the furniture was covered with sheets. There were no clocks on the wall, no knickknacks or utensils on the counter. In the corner was a cardboard box filled with photos and glassware. Would you carry my bag out to the car, she said. I took the suitcase to the cab and then returned to assist the woman. She took my arm and we walked slowly toward the curb. She kept thanking me for my kindness. It's nothing, I told her. I just tried to treat my passengers the way I would want my mother to be treated. Oh, you're such a good boy, she said. When we got in the cab, she gave me an address and then asked, could you drive through downtown? It's not the shortest way, I answered quickly. Oh, I don't mind, she said. I'm in no hurry. I'm on my way to a hospice. I looked in the rearview mirror. Her eyes were glistening. I don't have any family left, she continued in a soft voice. The doctor says I don't have very long. I quietly reached over and shut off the meter. What route would you like me to take, I asked. For the next two hours, we drove through the city. She showed me the building where she had once worked as an elevator operator. We drove through the neighborhood where she and her husband had lived when they were newlyweds. She had me pull up in front of a furniture warehouse that had once been a ballroom where she had gone dancing as a girl. Sometimes she'd ask me to slow in front of a particular building or corner and would sit staring into the darkness saying nothing. As the first hint of sun was creasing the horizon, she suddenly said, I'm tired, let's go now. We drove in silence to the address that she had given me. It was a low building, like a small convalescent home, with a driveway that passed under a portico. Two orderlies came out to the cab as soon as we pulled up. They were intent, watching her every move. They must have been expecting her. I opened the trunk and took the small suitcase to the door. The woman was already seated in a wheelchair. How much do I owe you? She asked, reaching into her purse. Nothing, I said. 
You have to make a living, she answered. There are other passengers, I responded. Almost without thinking, I bent and gave her a hug. She held me tightly. You gave an old woman a moment of joy, she said. Thank you. I squeezed her hand and we walked into the dim morning light. Behind me, a door shut. It was the sound of the closing of a life. I didn't pick up any more passengers that shift. I drove aimlessly, lost in thought. For the rest of that day, I could hardly talk. What if that woman had gotten an angry driver or one who was impatient to end his shift? What if I had refused to take the run or had honked once, then driven away? On a quick review, I don't think that I have done anything more important in my life. We're conditioned to think that our lives revolve around great moments, but great moments often catch us unaware, beautifully wrapped in what others may consider a small one. People may not remember exactly what you did or what you said, but they will always remember how you made them feel. Life may not be the party we hoped for, but while we are here, we might as well dance. Let our lives spread the words we hear in the Bible to spread the word of God through our actions and to always lift up to God praise in how we live. Amen.
Amen. The invitation to generosity, and we ask that all consider ways in which you can financially support the ministry of this church. Luke tells us that Jesus healed ten lepers, but only one returned to give thanks, and that one was a foreigner. Again and again, the Bible, the unlikely one in the story, becomes the model of generosity and grace. Maybe today we are the ones God is hoping will return to give thanks and praise. May we offer our best in joyful response to the gift of our lives that this mission of healing may continue to spread throughout the world. Let us pray together. Holy One, in Jesus Christ, you have shown what your heart is like, merciful and abounding in steadfast love. Form that same spirit in us that our lives may become continual prayers of thanksgiving. Let no cry of your creation go unheard. Form us as agents of practical praise, molding us with mercy for a world crying out for healing. Amen. Amen. Our final hymn is hymn number two. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee.
Go, my friends, because the mercy of God has freed you from your past. Go, because the mercy of God calls you forward into the world. Go, because the blessing of mercy you offer to others will lighten the burden they are carrying. Go, because by this mercy of God we are healed again and again. Thanks be to God. Amen and amen.